everyone. My name is Mickey Josie, and I'm a math teacher. And I um, just wanted to bring you some of my favorite math videos. So I've been teaching math since 2002, and I taught middle school and high school in New York for nine years, and then moved back to my home state of Oregon. And I teach uh, for Portland Community College and Clackamas Community College. And so I've been teaching a class called Math for Elementary School Teachers. So what kind of got me inspired to make this video was wanting to create a collection of all of my favorite math games that I like to use in my classes. And just thinking about my own teaching philosophy, I found this uh, quote actually on probably Facebook, but um, I thought it was really true. It says, scientists have recently determined that it takes approximately 400 repetitions to create new synapses in the brain, unless it's done with play, in which case it takes between 10 and 20 repetitions. And this was a quote, I did look up Dr. Karen Purvis and interestingly enough, it looks like she's a psychologist who works a lot with um, kids in foster care and in adoption around attachment. And I think that's also interesting because my family, we adopted our daughter, Electra. Um, so uh, this is just a little bit about me. I have this uh, PowerPoint presentation and um, I'm also a yoga teacher, so this is my little yoga setup in the background, but um, I also do have a YouTube channel. So I've been actually teaching online since 2017, and I was recording all of my lessons, and I found that that was really helpful for my students, and I would post them on my YouTube channel. So um, I'll have that link in the PowerPoint presentation as well. So my very favorite is the birthday numbers, and um, this is a huge hit always. Um, I have the cards linked here, and so that um, link will take you to the actual birthday numbers cards. I always start my classes with these, and that basically I'll show you in this video um, how I use those to guess kids' birthdays. So those are some of my friends' kids. and. Um, this is a really a big showstopper. In fact, I actually took it to my friend's um, party where he was having uh, a magician. And so people really think of it as kind of like a magic trick. So I really highly recommend it. Like I said, I'm not gonna go through um, necessarily how to play these games here. I'm just gonna kind of give you a quick overview. Hi, Oops. so I'm Mickey. I don't wanna play that video. You're... So let's go on to the next one. The next one is game 24, and I used to take my students in New York City to actual tournaments. So shout out to Freddie. <laughs> Frederick, we got to go to game 24 tournament in New York City. And um, this game is so fun. I would say that basically, you know, I've had students who didn't want to do any of the regular schoolwork in seventh grade who were begging to use uh, paper and pencil to um scrap paper, you know, to, to be able to do some calculations when we play this game. And so this is also a really great game for teachers out there. If you're subbing to have this in your back pocket, there's single digit and then there's double digit. There's actually many, there's exponents, there's negative numbers. And you can actually also do this game with just playing cards. Cause when we went to the tournament, I had, um, I met another teacher there and he didn't actually have the official game 24 deck, but what he would do is just uh, deal out four cards. And usually with four numbers, you can get to the number 24. So in this video, I kind of walk you through that. And I have a feeling it's gonna wanna play when I push enter for the next slide. So <clears throat> in the, PowerPoint presentation, or actually, I guess it's the Google slides, I include a few slides with some sample cards. And like I said, these are from my deck, the double digit, but I, I prefer, honestly, in the video, I show the single digit, and you can buy a pack of that for like $10. And it's a travel pack. And so it's um, half the size of the regular card deck. So game 24, super fun. The other game that I strongly recommend is the product game. So what I find in my teaching, I, I try not to make judgments about whether or not people have their time tables memorized, but I will say, and I link this um, time table sheet, which I got from my math teacher friend, Elaine. Um, anyway, she 
was, you know, we, I give this out actually to all of my students because it's just so helpful if students can have their time tables memorized. Of course, it's not very fair. I think about the time tables are like our basic patterns in math. And yet there's 144 that we're making students memorize. Whereas, you know, with the alphabet, you only have 26 letters to memorize, but this can be a great like printout here um, just to get to know them. And I have, like I said, a lot of other videos. One of my videos um, talks about the divisibility rules. And so that can be really helpful for memorizing times tables too, is just kind of um, knowing how to tell if a number is divisible, like for instance, by two or three. So the product game is one when I was teaching in New York that we um, played a lot. And even amongst us teachers, we played it for fun when we were in teacher training. So um, I have an actual printout of a paper copy. And the paper copy um, that is linked in this presentation has the instructions on it. And one thing you can do is actually have like um, checkers or you know, if you have Connect Four, you can use those so that you can reuse the game board over and over again. Because if students write on it with um, pen, it would basically be useless after one turn. And then, um, so pencil is better if you don't have like checkers or some kind of like blocks or markers. Um, but in this video, I show how I play it with a student um, using Zoom. And then there is an online version though. So the online version is brought to you by the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. And you can play against the computer with one player or you can play with two players and it will have all of the instructions here as well. Um, let's see. So let's hope this does not play. Oops, <laughs> technology. Let's go on to the next one. The next one is called Capture the Circle. And this game deals with fractions. So, um, and I used to play this game. I had stuff to sub for a lot of classes. So I would play this game with my students quite often. And it's really fun. So you would use it, if you use the paper copy, it has all of these circles with fractions in it. And what's really great about actually um, getting students to do games or even learn fractions with pictures is they have a better understanding of what the fraction means, what it looks like. So this is a circular version. What's nice about this one I found online, and this looks like it comes with the Curriculum Everyday Math by McGraw-Hill. But this one has all of the instructions. And then you could um, see kind of different representations of fractions. So lots of ways for us to visualize fractions. And when you have students do that, it makes it, takes it from a very abstract concept, which I think that nobody really understands fractions very easily abstractly. So it's really important to see a visual representation. And then it becomes almost obvious, right? Well, at least that's what I've found is when I work with students with pictures of fractions, that's a lot um, easier for them to understand. If you were gonna play this virtually on Zoom, you could use the dice here. Um, these are virtual dice. So you would basically be casting two dice, uh, die, is that plural? Dice is singular. And then you could use the numbers to make a fraction. Now you could change up the rules and make it more interesting, especially if you have older kids. But um, essentially, you know, we'd usually use for a proper fraction, the smaller number is the numerator and the larger number as the denominator. And then with the uh, capture circle, capture the circle or capture the fraction, you're trying to get more than half of that. And I'm not explaining the rules very well. So go ahead and just, I would say, read over the rules. But um, essentially, when you have one and five, you would color in one fifth. That's not going to get you very much of the circle um, or the square in that case. But that's why you're going to play back and forth. So that's that one. Another one that's really fun is a deck of cards called Set. And there's a lot of online versions as well. So um, this one, oops, I have the, the uh, link in the previous slide. So this is an online version of set. And uh, 
essentially you can look at yesterday's solutions to get an idea. You're looking for things that they have in common and things that they have different. So right away, I'm like, do I see a set? I'm trying, I'm already trying to uh, find one. But anyway, I'll let you go ahead and look through the presentation on how this works. And then I do have an online one, I mean, uh, an app for one on my phone. The next one I'm thinking about is Wordle. And so I just thought I would take a moment to like talk through how the Wordle works. And maybe you already know how it works, but there's another one called um, Nerdle that's for math. And so it actually works the same way. So the Wordle, we would just pick um, any kind of five letter word and then once the numbers flip, if it's yellow, it's in the wrong place, but it's the correct letter. And then if it has green, it's the correct letter in the correct space. And the gray ones um, are ruled out. So we're, they're not in part of this mystery word. So you have six tries to guess the mystery word. And then as I was mentioning, there's a math version called Nerdle. So you're actually making an equation using um, digits to make numbers and using mathematical um, symbols. So we could make up any, any kind of number sentence equals 24. And then if I push enter, I can see that one is in the right position and it's, it is included in the mathematical equation. And then the equal sign is in the wrong position. If I'm reading the directions correctly, I actually don't really play Nerdle that much. I think I do enough math in my life. So, but I've gotten really into these games on my phone. And in fact, um, I'm playing a lot of them. So uh, the next few that I, oops, where, where is it? Are uh, Quartal. This is Wordle with four words. And then you have Octordal, which I actually don't play this one because it has too many. It has, uh, you're guessing eight different words, but you're guessing one at a time. Uh, looks like it's gonna time you too, that's crazy. Um, but this one, I can't really see all eight on my phone, although it would be better maybe on the computer. I've been loving Samantle and you're just guessing a secret word. So I know that the secret word today, because I've been trying it, is very close to drink. So look at that, All already, just because I've already done um, a lot of guesses, I just know that that one is 998 out of 1,000. And so if you're guessing you know, things that are unrelated, you'll see that they come up cold. Well, how does this have to do with math? I think it's all problem solving. And I think it's also, um, there is some math, some numbers going on in here, understanding that sort of, um, I mean, that's almost like a percentage. I'm 99.8% to the word. What is the word? I don't know. What are some other words like drink? Sip. That's cold. Guzzle. Uh, beverage. All right. I don't know the word yet. So they will actually tell me um, after today. So if I can, I can look later on. Yesterday was spill, cliff, gather, roll, lend. All right. Um, I love these two in conjunction with each other, the global and the wordle or worldle. So the global, you're actually guessing a country. And I think this could be great for elementary school um, kids too. And what I like to do is actually get out little um, images of maps and start to look things up. But I actually already guessed the, the um, nation today. So you're putting in different countries. You could say USA, and then it will light up depending on how hot or cold you are. So um, I know it's actually in Africa. So I started with South Africa and then it wasn't that. So then I was trying, you know, Swaziland and as you're getting closer, it's getting darker. And so Swaziland is actually lighter. So it's not gonna be that. Um, the one that's also similar to this, that's really fun is the Worldle. And so you're gonna be given a shape of a country and then you're gonna guess what that is. And this one, I 
think, was it, I don't know, I did it earlier this morning. Now I can't actually even remember <laughs> what it was, but it actually is in Africa, just a fun fact. Um, and then Hurdle, this one is really fun too. We've been listening to this one. And so you're going to guess a song based on a clip. And it's only one second. And um, this one is actually Joan Jett. I love rock and roll. So once you submit it, yes to the song. <laughs> okay. And finally, so that's actually all of the ones I have in the presentation. Another one that I just thought of though is Kahoot. So this is one I like to play in my class. Um, Kahoot. And so you can make a free account. Teachers can, probably students can as well. And then it's like a quiz show game. So I've made a lot of them. And then there's a lot of other ones that teachers have shared. So I'll just really quickly try and show this one. Should have had it already queued up. This is what happens to me when I'm teaching on Zoom. I'm like, oh, I wish I had this already. But you can see that I have a lot of different ones. I think I have 32 that I've made. Um, and my subscription is not active. What? I think maybe I did do the paid feature. But um, anyway, this is really fun. It's just like a quiz show, sort of like um, Jeopardy in the classroom. Oh, and then lastly, I would say even just like flashcards. Sometimes I just play flashcards with my students where I'll do things like um, reducing fractions. You could also put some laws of exponents here so you can put your uh, variables with exponents. And that's just a fun way to quiz students as well. So I hope those were some good ideas and I hope you'll use them. Please reach out and let me know if you have any questions. Um, and I hope you can have a lot of fun playing math together. Thanks for joining me.